Hello. Shisha. All right. Uh, so this question comes from Cheng Long Wang, and the question is, uh, he was saying, I appreciate your kind words. Thank you. Thank you, Cheng. But he was saying, Hey, I got this. I have data that looks like this. It looks like company ABCD. And I have these, these dates appear and I want to find the previous month. And originally, the dates had the word January, or like this would be October, the, just the word, the word November, December, January. Ching, you're going to see why I changed these, but for everybody else, whatever. Bad news for you. When dates are like this, it's not good. You actually want dates to be just in one column. This is, this is not good where you have to have multiple columns to do things because you can manually do this, right? If I, if I were to go to here, I went and I went like this, and I have my, my dates at the top. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I could, I could totally do this way, but it is not, not the best, right? I could say, go give me month over month. I can say, go give me, uh, what are we doing? January, 2023, right? Minus December. But this way is highly manual, and you have to change this every single month. And why would you want to do this? I don't want to do that. Why would you want to? And be, there we get our numbers by by company. Ugh, I don't, but I don't want to do that. So if you have the data where you can do something where it looks like here is the date, you know, you would have the the company name, the date, and the value. That's going to be much better for you. But if not, I got you covered. We're going to we're going to flip it. So I made this ETL to show you exactly what to do. I just did it real pretty, pretty quick. We're going to take our data set where the dates are as columns, which I don't like, and we're going to flip it. We're going to use this dynamic unpivot thing here. I'm going to say, I want my company to stay where it is. Next column is called dates. And in that, I want you to put values. And then uh, make sure your date is actually a date and not a text field. OK, whatever. Let's go see the transformation. Let's go run it. OK, beautiful. So uh, there we go. My dates were originally at the top as columns. I did my dynamic unpivot, whatever. Now my dates show up this way. This is going to be super helpful for us. Now we can actually get to work. So I have this data set that does that flip. OK, cool. Let's go do something with it. So I did one for you ready. If I go to here, we have our analyze. So I have my company, I have values. I can say, show me the last two months or whatever I want. Show me, uh, show me all time. Let's, let me show you this. If I put in the date here, we have our original values like this, right? All companies, all dates, all values, month over month. But we, we don't really care about that. We want to know the just just the, the comparing the last two months. We just want it to do, our, do its job, and I don't want to have to touch it again. So I'm going to go to previous, last, and I only want to compare the last two months. Cool. So you see here, I have this one for December, this one for January, whatever. I'm going to take it out. Cool. So you see my thing here. What did I do? Well, I did this. I did, hey, give me uh, when the month of the date, that date column, equals the month of the current date, which is today, and the year of the date column equals the current year of the current date, which is today, then go give me values, okay? And I'm going to show you this. I'm going to copy this sucker, and I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to call this uh, current month value, whatever, current month value. I'm just going to put this as the first part of our formula so you can see it. And let's go plop that sucker right there. I got my current month value. Awesome. Uh, you know, I'm a stickler for things. Let's go move this position before. Let's go make it gray. And let's go make this header color, I don't know, red or something. OK, beautiful. OK, that's current month. Let's go do the same thing for the previous month. So the previous month's a little trick. You got to say when the month of the date equals the month of the current date minus, this is your key right here, minus one interval. You can't say minus one because what happens if it's January, which is 
number one month. If I say minus one, I get a month of a zero, which doesn't make any sense. You have to say minus one month interval. Same exact thing. When the month of the date equals the month of today minus interval one month and the year of the date equals the year of today minus interval one month, then go give me values. Okay, so I'm going to copy this whole thing and we are going to call this the previous month. Cool. I'm plop that sucker in. Boom. There we go. And awesome. I have my previous month. I have my current month. And I have my month over month difference right there. And then you could just let it sit. You just you just produce this chart and it'll always update every time you you have it. Hey, what if we're like, oh, but I want to know two months back, previous, previous month. Okay, well, we could totally do it. I'm just going to take my formula that I had previous month to previous you called it previous previous what happens if we're doing five months previous 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 it's like inception i'm going to just take this one move it to the top and now we're just going to change that to two months so we want to go even further back and we're good now we need to bulk this sucker up though to three months back Okay, and previous to previous, previous, previous month. Okay, there we go. Let's go put in what that previous, <laughs> previous, previous month is. Let's go put that, that in there. Previous, previous month. Uh, there we go. Look at that. We got our previous, previous month, our previous month, current month, month over month difference is that one, and then our previous month to uh, previous, previous. Anyway, hope that helps you out. And uh, for anybody who is watching, a couple things is if you go to my website, Dashboard Dudes, oops, that's an actual one that I'm playing with. You go to dashboarddudes.com. And if you go to uh, Pantry, I have a couple things. I have videos on answering different solutions to Domo. So go ahead. And if you want to see more videos, you can do that. Or you could do exactly what uh, changes did, by emailing me a specific question you had, and we'll try to get it. And I'm actually on. I'm actually publishing a Domo course. So if you're interested in learning how to do Domo, that's coming out very, very soon. So stay attuned for that. Give me your email, and I'll happily let you know when that is published, which is probably going to be in 20 days. Okay. Good luck to you.